welcome, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can tell, I am in the Boxster with the top down and the sun's out. Uh, it's actually not cold enough for me to be wearing a coat and a scarf. I'm actually trying to get quite warm now. But the, <clears throat> so what I'm doing at the moment is, I haven't said a lot in any great detail about the Boxster on the channel. And that's mostly because not a lot's been happening, but I have done a couple of things where I have cleaned it, the carpet's clean, all the mold is clean. Uh, it's been dried out because it's been sunny for about four days and every day I've taken the roof down and left it out in the sun all day. But then what happened was I fired it up. I was meant to take it to see Jack on Saturday. It's now Monday. And uh, it wouldn't rev above 2000 RPM. And I thought, right, okay, that's a bit foobard. Um, Interestingly, I think more people than I gave credit for knew what FUBARD meant. And obviously it's short for fucked up beyond all recognition. And it's been brought into the common lexicon, probably by Tango and Cash, where Kurt Russell said it. But it's, I think it's from the Second World War or somewhere like that. I think it's in, in a booklet or something where it's explained in a World War booklet. Anyway, I digress. So it didn't, so I googled it, that it didn't rev above two, uh, 2000 RPM, so I googled it and it said it's probably the mass airflow sensor. So um, I went to the Brain Trust, the former Porsche cooled owner stories people on the WhatsApp group that I'm in, and, and I asked what the problem might be, and Rich kindly put the process down where to reset um, the throttle body and the mass airflow. So what it does is it just sets it back to standard factory settings. So the first time I fired it up, it actually fired up and it was fine. It revved like crazy, it was fantastic. But then the very next time I did it, it, it didn't. So I talked to Jack, he was in the area, so he came around, he unplugged the sensor, and so I'm, I'm driving it now with the sensor unplugged. So he's gonna take a look at it. Uh, it's, it's about 300 pounds for a sensor, 300 pounds I haven't got. So he's gonna see what he can do. Uh, he might have uh, a good spare somewhere. So I don't know. Um, also, I'm a little bit, you know, breaking it a little bit because obviously the car doesn't have any road tax in the UK. You have to pay a road fund license or, uh, is it road fund duty? No, road fund license. So you can drive the car on the road. And to get that, you need insurance, which I've got, um, but you also need an MOT. An MOT is a, a worthiness, a roadworthiness certificate. So it goes through a test. Now, obviously it's not gonna pass that test because it needs the shocks doing, the rear brakes, the CV boots, uh, all of those things doing. But you can, if you've got it booked in somewhere, take it to the garage, uh, as long as you're not doing anything dangerous. So I'm taking it now to Jack to have that work done. Hopefully he's gonna do it over the next few days. I've also got the, because the stalks, the little clip that's inside the indicator stalk, that makes it return. Uh, so which means if it breaks, you can go turn left and it'll indicate left, but it won't automatically come back to the center. And you have to hold it when you're trying to turn right. And, and for some reason, the, um, the wipers aren't like that great either. And now that clicking started, which I must remind Jack, can he check the tightness of the plugs? Because someone on the forum said, that's probably what's causing it. So I'm hoping those things will be done and the interior's clean, it'll be roadworthy. I'll be able to drive it for about a month. Uh, I'm not really gonna do anything about the outside. I'm not sure I'm gonna do anything about the, um, the alloys. I'm not gonna get those done. The one thing that I will, I did look into was that someone's changed the, the barrel, the key barrel. And so it has two keys, one for the door, one for the ignition. Neither of them work on the remote. Uh, and I did see online that there were some, uh, a few lock sets available. So I can get one for like a hundred, hundred and something pounds. And just means that it's the same key for everything. And, uh, the, and it comes with the blade. And what I might do is then, then I might see if I can get a key. It just depends. I don't really want to spend that kind of money, but um, it's great to be driving it with the top down. The engine actually sounds quite good apart from that clicking, which I don't know if, I don't think you can hear on the, um, on the video. 
Um, I want to say thank you to everybody who watched and commented on the McCann GTS versus the 996 video, which when I, even when I was typing that out, I thought this is ridiculous, nobody cares. Uh, but thank you to everybody who watched it and commented and hit like. Um, and also on the 996 uh, with the with the oil, I think it might have a stuck lifter or something. I'll, I'll more on that when I find out more because I've, it was over two liters of oil that it took to bring it up to the right level. It drives so much better, but when I fire it up in the morning, and it's only in the morning, it makes that clicking, knocking noise. Um, so now I just need to get this over to Jack and knock it caught on a camera or by a police car, like I did the first time I drove it. It's actually quite zippy and everything feels fine. Steering, gears, pedals, clutch. Uh, the brakes obviously not because it needs the, well, the brakes work fine. But I'm not sure if the bias is out or something like that. The handbrake doesn't work at all. So obviously when the discs come off, Jack will be able to have a look at that. <clears throat> and I also need to tell him that he needs to come onto the Porsche Talk podcast. Uh, I would love to get him on because obviously he's got a big history with Porsche 996s. He started his journey on being a, a technician, engineer, specialist in Porsches around the time when 996s were quite new. So he, he served his time, he did his apprenticeship on 996s and boxes like this, which is why for me he's the go-to guy. So I need to tell him to come on the podcast this week because we haven't lined up a guest. I've been a bit really ambitious asking some people who obviously they've got such big Instagram followings because that's where I go and ask. I have gone the wrong way. I should have taken a short route down there, but I've gone down a main road, which is very bad. Hopefully I'm not gonna get caught on a camera. Anyway, that's all there is. Update for now. I'm going to, I'll, I'll feed back once Jack has done this and hopefully I'll be able to do that drive home where it's actually a proper driving car. The problem it will have still is the tires. The tires are just no name random tires. I think they're quite a hard compound. I don't have PASM, I don't have anything like that. So I need to be careful how I drive it. I would have liked my wife to drive it because I think it's quite a nice car to drive when everything's working. And she found the 996 just too mechanical, too hard. She had to think too much. Whereas this is just like driving any other car, really, a manual car. And everything's a bit lighter. Everything's a bit more forgiving. So we're going to do that. But anyway, um, and, and on the channel, uh, yeah, I, I've stalled on getting new subscribers, which is really weird. It's just gone to zero. I used to, I used to average about 28.30 on a, a month. But anyway, uh, thanks everybody for watching, hitting subscribe, hitting like, commenting, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.